Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, February 4th, 2024. Let's get into it. So let's hit the breaking news first, huh? So uh, U.S. and Houthis are in action tonight. Reports of renewed U.S. and U.K. strikes near the cities of Sana, Houdita, H-O-D-E-I-D-A-H, Damar, Tiaz, Hajia, and al Baida in Yemen. Sources are also claiming that within the last few minutes, the Houthis have launched several anti-ship ballistic missiles towards U.S. ships in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Then we get into, uh, well, this was, this was the, the other one, uh, breaking. The U.S. House will vote next week on a bill providing another 176 Billion dollars to uh, Israel as we have starving people in the streets of the United States. We have homeless uh, and we have, certainly have Ill uh, millions of illegal aliens we have to feed and give driver's license to and, and enable them to vote. Just just saying. Uh, Wall Street Silver, 44% of all single family home purchases in 2023 were by for private equity firms. Do you see where we're going? You will own nothing. You will be a renter. You will never own a house. If you are a young person and you vote Democrat, you're an idiot. Uh, of course, and make sure you're not voting for a rhino. So, a.k.a. BlackRock. They are creating a world where ownership is impossible. You want to know why you can't buy a house? Because they're being bought up by BlackRock. They're trying to destroy the family structure. Couldn't agree more. So, shock report. Yemen huge is threatened to cut an underground fiber optic cable in the Red Sea if the UK, US and UK launch another strike on Yemeni airports. Developing the cable blood. The cable is the lifeblood of communication pathways connecting Europe, Africa and the Middle East. This disruption would have a major impact on global financial systems. I, I, I just got to say, no shit. <laughs> I can't even imagine the devastation of its health. And then, of course, we got Elon Musk. I mean, every now and then he throws out something that's pretty damn good. What the heck is going on? Breaking 150 Democrats vote against the bill to deport illegal aliens caught driving while drunk. Well, I want to say driving while drunk, stealing from Social Security, and beating up U.S. cops. I mean, the Democrats are batshit crazy. Why in the hell would you vote Democrat? I mean, my God, they're voting against the, well, they, of course they want the votes, but my God, I, I, the, the, the illegal aliens could burn down an entire city in the United States and the Democrats would still not want them deported. So if you live in Chicago, New York, uh, Portland, you know, and your city gets burnt down, I got no sympathy for you. I hope the illegal aliens all pour into your cities, set everything on fire, and then the Dem your Democrat elected officials are just going to say, uh... They're welcome here in the United States. Yes, they are welcome in the United States. So that's sort of the breaking news. I wanted to get that out of the way first. Uh, we're going to get into the video. Uh, old news now. I, we hit uh, 85, uh, well, 85 strikes. I, I want to say, I don't know how many bombs. There's like 125 bombs uh, in Syria and Iraq. Isn't Iraq supposed to be our ally? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're bombing our ally. We, we're we're still well, of course, we're stealing Iraq's oil and we're steal stealing Syria's oil. But yeah, yeah, so we bombed uh, both of those places. Uh, and but the thing that the news isn't telling you is where did those bombers come from? They flew all the way from the United States to Iraq. Can you imagine how many refueling planes we had? I, we burnt more fuel than probably every car in the United States will burn for the next year. Getting our planes over to Iraq to bomb a couple of uh, goats or, or camel jockeys over there. I mean, and I say that. I'm, I'm, there were people that lost their lives, and I don't want to diminish that. But I mean... The thing that the, the news media and you'll see on other channels, they're not talking about the expense or the effect on the climate. That's a hell of a lot of fuel. And of course, the wear and tear on the planes. If you've ever worked on an airbase, which I have, okay, there's only a certain number of hours that you can put on these planes before they have to go in for serious maintenance. So now we've degraded our, our military capability 
because now those planes are going to have to go into maintenance, just like we've got our carrier fleets in maintenance right now. I mean, do you see? I, I honestly think to God that our, our government is made up of anarchists. There's no way to explain it. They are doing the controlled demo. And the thing is, I don't understand why the Pentagon, I guess the people in the Pentagon are the same way. They're all anarchists. They want the total destruction of the U.S. military, our military capabilities, and the destruction of the United States. There's no other explanation. Why else would you let 10 million people into the United States? The first video we're going to watch tonight is going to show you Yemen. Okay? Now, we got an open border. So, what, 10, 15 million people in the United States that haven't been vetted? We don't know who they are. I want you to watch this video that I'm going to show you how pissed off these people are. Do you think, now, I, I, let's just paint a scenario here, okay? I'm angry at the United States. I'm a poor nation. I ain't got a whole lot of money. What is the one thing I can do to hurt the United States the most? Well, it ain't, I can't shoot the planes out of the air. I can't. I got no air defenses to stop the missiles. Of course, we can hit a few uh, few ships and shut down the uh, whatever the name of that strait is. I, I'm like Scott Ritter. I can't bog 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 dude uh, strait. Uh, at the, shut down access to the Red Sea. At least I can say that. What would I do? Well, I imagine that I could buy a couple of plane tickets, fly some death squads over to uh, Mexico and work them up through the open border into the United States. Imagine the damage that, let's just say, a, a five-man team outside of a nuclear power plant or even uh, on, a, on just, or, or just our power substations. Do you think we've got people guarding the transformers and the electrical power stations? If I was Yemen, this is what I would be doing. I'd be putting in teams and I would be deploying them to the United States, uh, basically five, 10, 15-man squads, I, do you think that the drug cartels that are in the United States won't sell them weapons <coughs> with the right amount of money? I mean, Yemen's getting money from Iran, obviously. So, you know, for, uh, let's just say a few thousand dollars. You could, you could equip one of these teams. All they need is a few sniper rifles, some, some uh, AK-47s, and they could take out an entire electrical substation. They could put the entire city of New York, the entire city of Chicago, I mean, entire states without electrical power. It's, it wouldn't be hard to do to attack. And of course, I mean, there's other things you could do. You could just dump a bunch of shit into the water and, and poison an entire city of it with the water system, with a small number of people. If I was Yemen, that's what I'd be doing. And when you watch this video, when you watch this video, that's what I want you to think about. Because look how pissed off these people are. And I want you to, another thing you, I want you to notice, think about a protest in the United States. Uh, we got a bunch of truckers down in Texas. Do you think Biden or the Democrats or the rhinos and Congress give a shit about that protest? That's just a bunch of wasted fuel. They're wasting their time. Unless they're going to go kinetic, it, it ain't going to do no damn good. Okay? Now, on a positive note, uh, Governor DeSantis has sent the State National Guard uh, I think it's only like a thousand troops to, to help Texas, which is a positive development. I'm, I'm not saying that's not good. Now, that's why I love Governor DeSantis. I think he does a great job here in Florida. So, but let's get back to the video. I want you to see they're all got AK-47s and it looks like they're loaded. They got knives. They're waving knives around. They're waving battle axes around. And there's hundreds of thousands of them protesting in the streets. Do you think there aren't death squads in the United States by now sent from Yemen? And I just say Yemen. I'm sure there's death squads from Iran. I bet there's death squads from Iraq because Iraq's pissed off. Let's watch the first video now. Check it out. Look at how pissed off these people are. Houthi group struck southern Israel on Friday with several ballistic missiles and a claim that its attacks won't stop until a ceasefire in Gaza is reached. The Yemeni armed forces will not hesitate to carry out further military operations against the Zionist enemy on land and at sea until the aggression stops and the siege on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip is lifted. In Yemen itself, there was another mass display of solidarity with the Palestinian people. Crowds demanded that Houthi attacks on Red Sea shipping continue until Israel ends its defense from Gaza. A local journalist sent this report. 
here in the capital center uh, where another Friday demonstration just defeated with hundreds of thousands, if not even a million people to the streets of the Yemen capital, the Central Square, to deliver the same message that they have been sending for two months of protest. And that message is a clear, defiant one directed at the U.S., at the British government, and of course, the Israeli government. These protesters are condemning these nations, these states, for committing what they are referring to as genocide. Genocide with the Yemeni people are standing against and calling on their Yemeni military forces to step up and escalate their military activities when it comes to targeting U.S. ships, British ships, and of course Israeli linked ships in the Red Sea, in the Gulf of Aden, and in the Mediterranean Sea. We came here for our brothers in Gaza to protest against the oppression happening in there. Our message is to the U.S. and the U.K. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you strive, no matter how arrogant you are, we are here ready to deter you. We are steadfast and will not back down. Bab al-Mandab is a red line that they cannot cross until the aggression on Gaza ends and aid enters the enclave. Today, we came out to answer the call and support our brothers in Gaza. This is a religious duty for every free Yemeni to go out to the squares. My message is to the aggressive intelligence forces and the US, British and Israeli aggressors. We will attack your fleets and all your resources. Your attempts to hit our ports and all our resources do not scare us in the slightest. The sea will be hell for you and your ships. The Yemeni military operations continue in the Red Sea, America, the Sons of Israel, and those from the countries normalizing this will face severe misery. They also call our countries like Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and other Arab regimes in the region to support the Palestinian people and to cut all economic ties with the U.S. British governments because they believe you know, the Yemeni people are holding the U.S., they're holding the British government uh, you know, personally responsible for these attacks. The Osama of law and the movement has announced that if the Gaza war doesn't end, if the genocide continues, they will be forced to reveal new weapons and to launch more sophisticated ballistic missiles pointed at and targeting U.S., British, and Israeli linked ships. And this is in the midst of the U.S. calling for the uh, end, the ending of these military operations in the Red Sea. In fact, the U.S. and the EU, uh, and the EU have threatened to form a coalition to attack Yemen from land, air, and sea if Yemen's Ansar al Houthi movement continue targeting ships in the Red Sea. And of course, the Ansar al movement has announced they will continue to do so despite any attacks on Yemen and despite the U.S. threats of imposing a strangling blockade on the Yemeni economy. Mustafa Ali reporting from the capital, Sana. So I want you to watch that whole video. I bet you're going like, oh my God, I, you know, if he hadn't kind of put it in in perspective, you know, I wouldn't really notice the fact that they're waving guns and ammos and everything and how pissed off they are. So the, the, the next thing I wanted to get into, <coughs> well, before I get into it, I, I just want to talk a couple of things about me. I my I did a hiking video yesterday. I uh, know this, whew, I'd, sometimes you got to fly off on a different tangent, don't you? And uh, it was shaking around. I was trying a different setting. I was using uh, UHD and, and 30 frames per second because I wanted to see how it would turn out. And it did, it did kind of look shaky because I, I didn't want to use super study mode because super study mode narrows the focus of the video. Uh, it, it didn't work out well, so I will be buying a gimbal. A gimbal will hold the phone steady as I'm walking along and make future hiking videos. Yes, I keep adding to my equipment. A lot of people go... Man, your videos just don't look that good. Well, God dang it, I can only get so much money. All right, and so much time. Um, all right, so just wanted to get that out of the way. So, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, this was uh, interesting. And, 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 and ports are empty, you understand, in Israel. Now, I, I heard rumor, and I don't know if it's true, that, that Israel has entered into a ceasefire. Well, I imagine the economic pressure from that uh, Yemen's been putting on them. And I guess the theme of this video is, is the Yemen fighters. And I want to call them the Yemen fighters. I don't call them the Houthis, you know, or, or Iranian-backed terrorists, if you listen to the radio. <clears throat> so I, I call them the Yemen fighters. And uh, I tell you what, they, they, they're, 
they're doing great. I, I, I'm putting my notes. Hootie's my ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the Yemen government. Look at the, look at the that last video. Holy shit. So the United States and Israel are becoming much and much, much more isolated. On that theme, on that theme, we get into the next video. So do you think that bombing Iraq was a good idea? Now, Iraq supposedly is kind of our ally, but it looks like their government is pissed, man. And wouldn't you be pissed if, 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 if Iraq bombed the United States? I mean, how would we react? So... What Iraq is saying, now think about it. We just had Saudi Arabia, uh, the, you, uh, uh, all of the, well, a lot of the Arab nations have now joined BRICS. Uh, of course, we had the original nations uh, have joined BRICS. Everybody's getting away from the dollar because they don't want the dollar no more. And But what is the United States? But the anarchists, the demolition experts that exist in the United States government that want the United States destroyed, the Marxists, I, the only thing I can, I'm telling you, this has got to be on purpose. There's no way they're this stupid. They, whoever's in charge, it's, I call it the globalist elite. They're the ones running things. I don't know why, but they want the United States on its knees. They want us uh, totally defanged. Uh, all of our weapons are gone. We've given everything to Ukraine. We've given all of our bombs to Israel. And now we're wasting all our fuel flying over to Iraq to bomb a bunch of camel herders. Uh, we're dropping the bombs there. I mean, do you think that we have an unlimited supply of bombs and weapons to protect the United States? I'm telling you right now, there's going to be nothing left to protect the United States. And, it, and once these, these terror cells are activated inside the United States, we got no troops here. All of our troops are overseas. All right, so let's just keep going. So let's watch the next video. So this is Iraq on how pissed off they are about the fact that we just bombed their country. The U.S. State Department, meanwhile, has said that Iraq must do more to protect American forces in the country. We have made clear to the government of Iraq for months, going well back, uh, well before this attack over the weekend, that we wanted to see the government of Iraq do more to uh, police attacks on our forces, to hold accountable those responsible for attacks on our forces, and that if that we would not hesitate to take action to defend ourselves. The Iraqi government has long urged the U.S. to withdraw its remaining 2,500 strong troop presence in the country, although the Pentagon once again disregarded this earlier in the year, stating that it's not going anywhere. Baghdad says it's also at odds with Washington when it comes to financing, with the country's parliament demanding the use of alternative currencies for oil sales. The U.S. Treasury is still using the pretext of money laundering to impose its sanctions against Iraqi banks, which requires a national stance that puts an end to these arbitrary decisions. We renew our call to the government and the Central Bank of Iraq to take rapid measures to get rid of the dominance of the dollar by diversifying our cash reserves from foreign currencies. Washington recently slapped sanctions on several Iraqi banks for activities alleged to have benefited Iran. That is, complicated energy payments to Tehran, as Baghdad relies on gas and power from its neighbor. Independent Iraqi politician Saad al-Mutalibi says that Baghdad may have to turn its back on the dollar. Now the Iraqis are hurt because of the dollar and the hurt because of the lack of the dollars in the market because the Americans are withholding Iraqi money which is kept in American banks and America refuse to send that uh, Iraqi money, Iraqi property, refusing to send it to Iraq for, so Iraq could use it. Basically it's a black a blackmail, a really vicious blackmail against the ordinary man in the street. We have a commodity which is oil. We need the return of the sales of this oil to come to the country so we can invest it in the people themselves, invest it in, in, in the local economy, invest it in industry and so on. And now we cannot because the part half of the economic system in Iraq and the trade system has been taken out by the Americans using the dollar as a, as a weapon against the nation. Uh, so yes, we do probably uh, have to work out a system where we could uh, move away uh, from the dollar and uh, definitely uh, to save the Iraqi economy, 
Now, from the Americans, we may have to move into another direction and another uh, basket of uh, further new currency. So that's uh, that's a wreck. I mean, and we're illegal. They've told us to get out. We're illegally occupying their country, just like we're illegally occupying Syria. I, I don't even know where to go with all of this. I mean, I, and I can't believe the American people. Well, it was kind of like uh, Scott Ritter said, you know, everybody's just existing in their little mushroom areas, uh, playing video games. Uh, they don't really pay attention to the world around them or what's going on. And uh, I, I, you know, I guess until the, the, stuff hits the fan and, and the guns are going off outside their houses and, and I'm sure they will be at mine. At least I've got some bullets, uh, not a whole lot, you know, uh, that I can go out and shoot back, but I'm sure that as a crippled old man, I, I wouldn't last long. So uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. I guess uh, I, I did want to get into just a couple of posts that I've put up. i and then we'll end, we're almost to the end of the video. I know that, because uh, we've gone through the bookmarks, let's get into profile posts. So, oh yeah, this was huge. Uh, so breaking news here, uh, I, I, I guess this is true. Uh, Tucker Carlson has arrived in Moscow, Russia to interview President Vladimir Putin uh, with the hope of bringing the war in Ukraine to an end and averting World War III. If this is true, I can't believe he got a visa to go to Russia, but I think it's wonderful. And man, I tell you what, this I, I predict right now that this will be the, if this is true, this will be the most watched interview around the world uh, in the history of the world. I, I'll bet this gets a billion views. It's, it's going to sweep the world like crazy. And uh, I wonder what, I mean, and what would the United States... Uh, uh, communist uh, Marxist government think? I mean, I, I, why in the world would they let him go? over there to conduct this interview but let's 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 hope it's true i don't know if it's true and if this was another post uh, one thing i want people to comment on and by the way i've gotten zero <laughs> zero comments zero votes you, if you don't think i'm buried in the algorithms on x and and uh youtube and well i don't think rumble buries me but nobody follows me there one thing I want people to comment on is the Star Wars villain, Victoria Newland. She has been the spider pulling the strings behind the scenes, causing the Ukraine war since 2014. Somehow she has remained in the U.S. government, spinning her spider web. Her recent visit to Ukraine seems to mean the end of General Zeluzhny, which I keep hearing rumors he's going to be gone. He's been fired. I, I, and then I say, no, he's still in power. I mean, you know, I guess he told Zelensky to go screw himself. I don't know. We'll see where this goes. The commander of Ukraine Armed Forces. She seems to also command the European Union because she's the spider in charge of the European Union. Don't tell me Schultz, uh, that's the biggest puppet on planet and, and Baerbach and all of them other idiots. The only person that I like is Orban. He, he seems to have his own independent mind. Is she the female version of the evil Emperor Palatine? <laughs> so I thought that was a great one. Uh, so looks, uh, this is an interesting one. Looks like the Russians are fighting the actual Azov Battalion Nazis in Ukraine and Israel have joined them in their ideology. This, Max, this is from Max Blumenthal. Openly genocidal Israeli member of Knesset Amicha Chiki has been quietly removed from the speaker's list of this German pro-Israeli conference, but the name, the New York Times chief diplomat correspondent, remains. And uh, anyway, he was a Nazi, uh, German-Jewish. Ah, uh, that's it. That's it for today's video. Had some other things I uh, wanted to talk about, garden and all, but we'll hit that in the next video. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna 
Cut you down.